All right, people, let's get to the uh, straight to the point with this video. This video is going to be a little different than my last couple. Um, my, of course, my initial ones were Sith ramblings, Sith Lord ramblings, which is basically me discussing Sith Lords, things I like, things I didn't like. Yeah, you know, they're getting decent views, and you know, I figure some people might be going on binges when they look at my videos going, oh, what's this, what's this, and you know, some people probably go, oh, it's crap, <laughs> move on. Some people might watch the whole thing. Not a lot of people leaving comments or likes or anything, but you know, it doesn't, that doesn't really bother me. As long as people watch my videos and listen to the crap I have to say, I mean, that's a little bit of a success, so, you know. I mean, I didn't start doing these videos because I figured I'd, you know, become some mega YouTuber or anything. This is just kind of a side project in my life, really. Just for the sheer fact I want to share my opinion. So, um, based on the title of this video that I'm going to put up, it's a discussion video. They're not really discussion in the common sense where, you know, you got maybe one or two guys talking about, or not one or two, but you got like two or three guys together talking about a subject that they all feel passionately about, maybe with varying degrees of uh, opinions, maybe not, um, ranting, raving, stuff like that. This one's going to be a little bit on the ranting side uh, from my part, because frankly, the thing we're going to talk about today really annoys me in many ways, although... With Disney now being as it is, this thing used to annoy me a lot more, and now Disney bears the brunt of being my most hated thing right now. So, um, let's not wait much any longer because I tend to take two minutes to even get the freaking video started once again. Okay, so obviously, this discussion is going to be about Star Wars The Old Republic, the MMO that came out in, jeez, what was it? A li oh, 2011 freaking three years ago my whew, time flies um now it, when it came out it looked really nice in my opinion i thought you know okay you know, decent concept an idea you know sith being in hiding in the pseudo unknown regions i guess in the time period droman cost is like considered unknown regions even though by like the movie's time that is in the zone of basically known territory in the outer rim. Um, so I didn't have a problem with the premise. Um, I didn't have a problem with the stories necessarily, but then I started to watch things kind of binge, kind of go through, see what people were doing, see where stories went and whatnot. And this is when I started to notice the issues with it. And this is where I started to have a problem with it. Okay. Let's begin by first my, uh, prefacing once again. If you like the game, if you love the game, you like the story, you love the story, all that good stuff, that's totally fine. I don't care. If you like it, that's fine. I even accept all the BS that happens as canon. I'm like fucking Disney, but you know, I'll get into that at a different time. I accept it all as canon. I accept it all as happening. I accept it. I don't like it, but I don't have to like something. I, I can accept it. Um, doesn't mean I have to like it. Um, <sighs> story of my life. Story of anyone's life, really. Um, but yeah, Star Wars The Old Republic began to piss me off, and why I really don't like it nowadays is because, look at this, like, look, look at it like this, okay, first of all, from an in-universe point of view, it doesn't make much sense at all, uh, maybe it does to you, but to me it doesn't, because we have all this build-up from Bioware going back, supposedly, to Knights of the Old Republic, the first game, with, you know, Revan and all that. They were hinting at something. Actually, you know, in that game, there wasn't really a lot of hints. I mean, they were, it, 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 there were a few subtle hints, like oh, they went to the uh, they went to the unknown regions, came back different. That was kind of the only thing. I don't think back then they necessarily still had a full idea what they were planning on. And then Knights of the Old Republic Two came around and they solidified that something was out there, something had corrupted Revan and Malik, which again pissed off a lot of people because you know. Revan being turned evil instead of just deciding to be evil on his own, I guess, annoyed people. But I'm not going to get into the whole Revan argument because, frankly, Revan fans sometimes are a little too extreme, even for me. Um, and so we come to find out through the Old Republic that the Sith Empire that was led by the likes of Marco Ragnos, Naga Sadao, Tula Port before, and Ajanta Paul apparently reconstituted itself after the Great Hyperspace War and fled into the 
quote unquote unknown regions, even though these unknown regions are basically just parts of the Sith Empire that the Republic didn't have freaking information about, like Korriban or Zeost or uh, was it Car Delba was the other world? Anyway, um, they were led by someone who didn't really have a name, the most broken Sith Lord in all history. Darth Vitiate, the Sith Emperor's. I'm not, oh, I'll talk about him in a minute. Um, they rebuilt their society, rebuilt their forces in secret, somehow managing to survive. Um, you know, and you know, I didn't have a problem with that. That was all fine. Um, it's when we started to get into the nitty gritty of what they were doing out there. That started to really make me go, oh, wait, what? <laughs> okay, so, first of all, they they are constantly, supposedly, sending infiltration units into the galaxy, or just people who infiltrate this and that, governments, uh, orders, even the Jedi, and basically they just screw around and send information back to the Emperor and the Empire, what's going on. Um, apparently... Again, since this came after, they didn't give a fuck about anything happening during the Great Sith War, but whatever. Um, uh, and they are apparently the ones behind making Mandalore the ultimate. Just say, yeah, fuck it, let's start another crusade against the Republic and just go around fucking killing people left and right for the hell of it. And then let all the Mandalorians know later on that we're basically... You know, the Mandalorians, for, for as much as everyone wants to jerk them off, frankly are really, really, really good at being used. Oh, warrior culture, freaking honor, bravado, they're intelligent, but yet they keep getting fucking used by other people, and when they find out, it's like, oh, that, I can't believe we were just used. Oh, that, that, oh, that's just terrible. You know, for our honor demands that we don't be used by, and yet they st it happens all the time. And then even the fucking clones in the Clone Wars. Sure, they're clones, but they all act like they're fucking Mandalorians. And they all get used like pieces of shit. And then get tossed aside after the war for other clone models and sh uh, templates and shit. It's just... Uh, again, the Mandalorian love that goes around, I don't understand that much. Mandalorians are cool. They're just not that cool. Alright, so moving on. Mandalorian Wars were there for the Sith. The Sith Emperor instigated the Mandalorian Wars. Kind of takes out all of the interestingness, if that's even a word, of the Mandalorians and why they decided to just go around essentially committing genocide across the entire Outer Rim for no reason other than we like to fight and we have honor system. I think what they were trying to do was make the Mandalorians seem like a weird quasi uh link to like the like the Japanese kind of and the the way that they acted during World War II where they just you know their warrior system and whatnot and how they killed people in mass and massacres um but it doesn't work that well because I don't believe it I don't like it and I think it doesn't really fit in their honor system and code as they call it is broken and doesn't really make any sense your honor dictates that you go to worlds and kill innocent people who can't fight because they won't fight you. Yeah, makes a lot of sense to me. And don't tell me they didn't do that because according to many sources, they all but wiped out the Cathar on their home planet just for the fuck of it. That means wiping out that they killed women and children across many worlds just for the fuck of it. What kind of bullshit is that? You know, when people like these types of people who go around, oh, they're warrior, their honor dictates that they go around murdering people. It makes me really just slap my myself because, you know, you people essentially fall in love with another group of people who like to murder indiscriminately, and if it weren't for the Sith, frankly, being a thing in the Star Wars universe, the Mandalorians would be the deadliest enemy the galaxy would have ever had. And that might, you might like that fact, but the fact is, they are assholes. Always have and always will be, but I'm starting to rant about something else. So the Sith Empire and the Sith Emperor Vitiate started the Mandalorian Wars. Um, he didn't care who won or lost according to sources, and they lost because of Revan. Revan began chasing Mandalorians into the Unknown Regions, or so 
some of the sources I've read have said some sources say he just decided to go into the unknown regions. It I I think he more likely chased Mandalorians, but why the fuck were Mandalorians going into the unknown regions? Because even they didn't know what the fuck was out there. And it was out here that Revan and Malik came across the uh, Sith Empire, confronted the Sith Emperor, and he just, again, is so broken of a character, he twisted those two to become his apprentices, which, you know, hey, Darth Revan fans, you like Darth Revan? Well, fuck you, because he apparently is nothing compared to the Sith Emperor. Bioware said so. Get used to it, is what they were saying, basically. Revan has been demoted from their most prized character to just a character they use for cheap marketing, really. Um, uh, okay, so he sends them back into the galaxy, tells them to go find the Star Forge because he wants to use the Star Forge, and the excuse we got is that Revan and Malik decided to build their own empire, broke themselves free of his control, decided to build their own empire, decided to take over the galaxy and uh, build up their forces to fight the Emperor themselves and build their own Sith Order. Uh, you know, that's retconned in, really, because Malak makes no real sense in what he's doing if he knows about this in KOTOR 1. Revan kind of makes sense. They go more into depth in KOTOR 2 with, like, he didn't destroy and damage planets and systems that were critical to shipbuilding, to garrison positions, to military military worlds and resource worlds. He did not hurt that badly in his attempt to conquer, conquer the galaxy. Malak, on the other hand, just blitzkrieged and fucking scorched every planet he came across just to win. Um, you know, I have said in another video that Malak is, uh, Malak definitely would have lost if the Emperor would have invaded his galaxy, like if he had made his own empire, he would have lost, he would have been freaking useless. Um, so, after the events of KOTOR 1, Revan begins to have his memories, he goes back to the unknown regions, tries to confront the Emperor, the book happens, Revan, and he gets caught, I don't... <sighs> I, I, you know what, I, I can't go into that because frankly if I go into how he's caught and how he's put into his little suspended animated state where he's just like fed off of by the Emperor, it's going to freaking make my brain hurt. And then the exile just being tossed aside just pissed me off even more because frankly, the exile had a lot of... The exile, I like the exile a lot. Just the story they went through, and who they were as a character. I still like Revan, of course, but the exile was. I, I probably like the exile more. That might just be because my bias. I did play Kotor two first, ironically, and it kind of made Kotor one a lot more legendary in my mind because the more I heard about the stuff that happened in Kotor one through Kotor, Kotor two, not playing number one, it made everything seem so dreamy and far away and legendary. And then when I played KOTOR 1, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool, but, you know, it kind of ruins the mystery for me. But, you know, that's how the, that's how the chrono uh, chronology went, so I can't really complain. Um. <sighs> so, the... Okay, so KOTOR 2 happened. The exile went after Revan. They, they almost killed the Emperor, according to the book. They fail. And then you get the the lol, not lol, but the lol in uh, uh, galaxy-spanning threats and wars. And the Empire decides finally to begin invading the galaxy, kind of just on a whim. They were there ready. And, you know, their initial strikes were blitzes. Then no one was expecting them. They were freaking pretty well prepared um great galactic war not really that great uh masses of sith versus jedi obsidian or uh, not obsidian fuck me bioware trying to one up themselves with the Great Galactic War versus the Jedi Civil War, because the Jedi Civil War wasn't really all that expanded upon anyways. So the Sith come through, they decimate a lot of worlds, including Alderaan, which is kind of ironic, because Alderaan was supposedly 
That's another canon breaking thing where Alderaan was supposedly always a peaceful world. Now suddenly the Alderanians are going around fucking murdering each other like crazy in their, their civil war. Um, they attack Bothui. Freaking hardcore too. Bothui had the last stand of a couple, a couple thousand, a couple hundred troopers and one Jedi general. Um, they even sack Coruscant, you know, which again, Coruscant has come under attack by Sith forces now. One, two, three, seven, you know, for being the freaking planet that's the capital of usually every galaxy dominating government, they come under attack almost constantly and there's always someone getting through. Kind of cheapens the whole idea of the capital being attacked, really. It's like, oh, this is happening again. Okay, whatever. Ironically, it was only the Jedi Civil War that the capital world didn't get attacked by the Sith. Um, I mean, even Exar Kun led an assault there and Ula Keldrum before him in the same war. Um, oh boy. Okay, so the Sith Emperor. My god. Okay, let's talk about the guy really quick who can suck the life out of a world, suck the life out of a planet, suck the life out of anything and everything, because god dang it, he just likes to suck the life out of people. He likes to suck the life out of fucking a genre, that's for sure. Okay, for people who like Vitiot, who like him, who like his characterization, who like the character, who like his uber powerful break canonness, again, that's fine. I'm not gonna, I can in no way take that away from you. But we're talking about a guy here who has been alive for about, you know, uh, 2,000 years by the time he comes back to the galaxy as he is. Um, has immense power because he essentially ate the life force of an entire planet of Sith people and lords after the Great Hyperspace War fell apart. Who doesn't die who essentially is immortal, despite what people want to say. He's not really immortal. He's immortal because he can transfer his essence from body to body, um, making them his voice. <sighs> yeah. So, you know, he goes from body to body. He can't really die. Um... He doesn't really do anything, though. You know, he, he the one of the plots I forget which one it is. I think it's the uh, oh, I think it's the um, Jedi Knights in the in the game. The plot basically being stopping him from causing so much death in the galaxy in several places all at once that the dark side basically just flows out into the galaxy and he's allowed to somehow eat the whole galaxy in his big plan is to go from galaxy to galaxy, sucking the life out of all that he comes across. Which, you know, would have been really ironic if he ever came across, like, you know, the Yuzhan Vong galaxy, because they would have been like, hey, fuck you, you can't do it. So, yeah, I don't think Bioware really cared about the, that canon at that point. Especially since they knew he didn't even exist anymore. Um, Again, what, what does he really do? He, he creates all these weird little orders of uh, cultists who really like to follow his ass. He beat Revan, you know, I guess. He twisted the mind of the Jedi, or the Jedi counselor, or was it the knight again? To, you know, he, he break, he's so broken because he can go into your mind and make you a slave to his will. He can put you in suspended animation and then just feed off of your, your life force and the information in your mind and all, then also be manipulated at the same time by Revan accordingly. Suck the life out of planets. He feeds on massive amounts of people dying. Um, he is so broken, you know, it's just like Bioware was essentially trying to create an evil character that trumps all evil characters there are and ever will be. And you know what? I don't appreciate it when people come in and create evil characters and it's just like, oh, hey, look at this evil character. They just beat everyone else, right? I mean, this is this is a real badass. No. He barely does anything. I don't appreciate him. I don't like him. He's frankly not that great an evil character. He's not that interesting of a villain because his only real interesting character history is that he was born basically in like one of those fairy tales about, you know, an evil serial killer basically. Like, oh, he was born not crying and his eyes were black as night. Whatever. 
Really? You're going to go with that? You're going to go that he was one of those babies just born evil? I'm sorry. I thought, you know, humans made their own decisions later on in life that they weren't just born being the devil. But no, essentially what they're trying to say is that he's the devil. Frankly, Sidious could have killed his ass. Plagueis could have killed his ass. And Bane probably could have killed his ass. I'm not going to sit up here and say my favorites is Lord Exar Kuhn. Maybe could have killed him, because I actually accept this as canon, even though it is bullshit in my mind. But still, plenty of other people could have killed this jackass. <sighs> Sorry. This, I, it's quite obvious I have issues with this game, still. After all these years. <laughs> um, another thing that annoys me. Oh, the characters in the game. Just, oh, bravo by bravo. You made characters that are intentionally bland because, you know, these characters, whether they're Kultor or whether it's um, Swotor, they have to be bland because you're supposed to put your own personality into that uh, character, that model. But, you know, you're going overboard when you have, uh, what is it, uh, four evil uh, types. There's the... The Sith Warrior, the Sith Inquisitor, the Bounty Hunter, and the um, Imperial Intelligence Agent. And then for the light side, it's the Jedi Knight, Jedi Counselor, Smuggler, and uh, a Trooper, or Commander, whatever you want to call it. And all of them are, are blank slates. All of them are just blank slates. They never get anything but generic names because they can't fix audio files for you to create some name and then have all of the audio just come out with your actual name. It's just some generic like, hey you, hey the Jedi, hey hero of Tython, hey Sith number 134785-2A. You know, and that gets really tiring after a while because, you know, at least after a while I was like, oh no. Whatever you named him, he's Revan, okay? Whatever you named her, she's the Exile slash Mitra Sirik. But no, this will forever be, you are just Sith Warrior, Sith Inquisitor, yada yada yada. And now with the Disney uh, canon uh, slashing, that's how it's going to forever be. So, and you know, these characters, after I started to watch it, I started to realize just how boring it was to watch these characters interact. I don't care about the several scenes they all have where they do something or say something funny. At the end of the day, the animations on this game are not great because it's an MMO. The storyline is not that interesting to me because they all kind of follow this linear path where eventually you start the second Great Galactic War. Again, get into that in a minute. And the same shit's going to happen where you hear about the Sith Emperor being beaten by the Jedi Knight. But no, he's not really beaten. He's just hiding, waiting, biding his time. And the whole Sith Empire just breaks apart in the Civil War, essentially making the Second Great Galactic War void, because now the Republic is basically going to come through and destroy all the major power bases of this empire that had half the galaxy under its control after the First Great War, because the Emperor just doesn't give a fuck. There's another thing about the Emperor. He doesn't give a fuck at all about his own empire. He doesn't give a fuck about ruling anything. He's just like, fuck it. You people kill yourselves. You people kill each other, because I'm just going to feed on the darkness and the fucking death that comes off you people. Again, am I supposed to like this? Am I supposed to like a Sith character? And, you know, you can like Sith characters. Some of them can be pretty interesting. But am I supposed to like a character who's just like, fuck everyone, fuck everything, everything should die, because I'm just going to eat the whole galaxy once everything dies, go to galaxy. Who honestly likes a character who just wants to see the whole universe be eaten? Who likes to see the whole universe be destroyed? You know, there, there's a certain limit where you can take a character who maybe wants to see everything annihilated, but they have to have a specific purpose for it. Do they hate the universe? Did something happen to, like, their family, to them, that makes them just utterly hate and despise life? No, this guy was just born evil, so he has no real purpose for eating the galaxy other than to become supposedly stronger, and then stronger, and then stronger, and then I guess he's one of those stereotypical villains who's like, eventually I will become a god. And it's like, oh, oh, I, really, you're going to become a god because we don't already have enough uh, canon-breaking gods in Star Wars already as it is now. So, yeah, the characters are going to follow a linear path. It doesn't matter what choices you make, because they're eventually they're going to have to come up with a specific set of this is what happened. Wh whatever choices you picked, we don't care. Kind of like with KOTOR, KOTOR 2. If you pick the dark side endings, we don't care. The light side ending was how it's supposed to be. So Star Wars The Old Republic is going to tell you, we don't care what you pick. 
this is how it was supposed to be. And at the end of the day, guess what? Your characters didn't change anything because the canon already established after Star Wars The Old Republic is there. So it was almost the same thing with Knights of the Old Republic, but there was enough open area between the like next storylines and whatnot and KOTOR where you could say, well, you know, events in that time period are unknown. A lot of shit could have happened where this kind of just faded over time, especially since it was thousands of years before the movie. This event happens not too long or yeah, not too long until the new Sith Wars happen. And we all know the new Sith Wars are supposedly the greatest Sith conflict uh at least for that time period, because they last a thousand years and the Sith essentially take over almost the entirety of the galaxy except for the core. And the core, and the things come so bad that Jedi take over the freaking Galactic Republic, putting their own uh, masters as supreme chancellors. And the only reason that they won is because they had this massive final stand on Rusan that took battle after battle after battle after battle. And at the end of the day, the only reason the Sith lost is because another Sith turned on them because he thought they were a bastardized version of the one of the order he uh, thought he was part of, and that was Bane. So what did this game accomplish? What did its canon accomplish? Nothing. It got nothing done. It added nothing except for saying these events happened. I will say that there are some cool characters that came out of it. But at the end of the day, it said these events happened. What really happened to the galaxy because of it? I'm holding my hands out right now, and I know no one can see it, but nothing. Absolutely, positively fucking nothing. And I hate it. When something comes along, trying to act like it's this new groundbreaking, breaking, big story, bombastic, and adds a lot of flavor to this universe, you've given a lot of your own, you know, uh, fandom time and energy to. And at the end of the day, we really look at it. No, it didn't. It didn't tell me anything new. It did Well, it told me something new, but it was something that was just kind of like, hey, guess what happened? Did you know this happened? It's like walking up to someone, hey. Do you know about the, the Bulgarian pig war? What the fuck is the pig war? They'll ask and then you'll tell them, oh, a pig crossed the Bulgarian border at some point. Soldiers started to shoot at the farmers and the pigs, and a war broke out. And then a ceasefire happened a couple hours later, and you're like, okay, I didn't know that happened, but what did it really do to the, to the planet in our case? Nothing. It did nothing. Because you know what? More important shit happened before, and a lot more important shit happened after. It's the same concept with this thing. And for all of its bravado in calling its war the Great Galactic War, why is it so fucking great? Let me let me reiterate a point I made in another video. This the Bioware had the balls to call these wars Great Galactic Wars because that that title like, it's supposed to be like the galactic version of World War One, World War Two, you know, Cold War. Uh, and, you know, let's talk about some of the other wars in the galaxy that have happened. You have the Clone Wars. As much as I don't really care for the TV series that was out, the Clone Wars have been established by Lucas himself. Think of him what you will. But if you want to be in-universe and you want to follow canon, even as I do, like I said, I accept this as canon. If you want to accept shit as canon and actually be a fan, you have to accept that the Clone Wars, by his own declaration, up until that point, is the most damaging, most life-costly conflict in galactic history. And it's called something as, frankly, kind of unique as the Clone Wars, Clone War sometimes referred to as the Great Clone War, but it's just just called Clone Wars, honestly. And, okay, then we have the next war after that, the Galactic Civil War. Not as, uh, you know, big and whatnot, but, you know, during the period after the movies, apparently shit really ramped up. I mean, there are millions of troopers and rebels dying, especially when Palpatine's clone, yeah, I'll talk about that at another point, start shooting shit out of, like, you know, uh, the galaxy gun and using the world devastator is just people dying left and right. So, again, I don't think it'd like beat the Clone Wars in uh, death toll, but in devastation, it probably maybe matched it. Then you have all those little conflicts afterwards, and then you have the crowning achievement of bullshit in Star Wars canon, which I don't know if I hate this more than Star Wars The Old Republic, but I'm going to use it anyways because, again, I accepted this canon. And. It is, um, it's, uh, the Yuzhong Vong War. Oh, my fucking Christ. The Yuzhong Vong War that takes up, like, 300 trillion life, lives 
And you're gonna tell me that this war that happened like three thousand years ago at this point with the Yuzhong Fong is called the Great Galactic War? Are you shitting me? Just because the name wasn't taken and you wanted to act like your war was somehow the most costly, devastating thing that ever happened to the galaxy? No, it isn't. It never was, never will be, because the Yuzhong Vong War, I think, is supposed to be the most devastating and life costly war. Again, you could argue maybe the Clone War is still war, but I'm pretty sure the Yuzhong Vong just took more lives in general. Um, I'm not going to discuss why the Yuzhong Vong in this video fucking annoy the fucking piss out of me. And I'm glad they're not canon anymore, frankly, in, in a way. Even though, again, I like this, I like Legends canon. If I could just take Legends canon, ignore the Yuzhong Vong, I would be happy because frankly, the Yuzhong Vong broke everything and made a lot of shit that came afterwards really retarded. <laughs> again, excuse my usage of that word. Um, so yeah, Great Galactic War, not so great. Why, why do you call it great? Well, because there's a lot of Sith involved. Well, there's a lot of Sith involved with the Great Hyperspace War. That war that apparently lasted several hours and was apparently galaxy spanning. And we're not really shown it. We're not really given much detail or information about it. But fuck it, it is. That it happened. It's what it was. It's what it's called. No, this war is even bigger. It's even better because we have Sith, actually. Sith species and Mandalorians, once again, being used by us even after Candorous made the Mandalorians, you know, brought them back from the brink of destruction. What did they do with it? They go right back to serving the Sith like a bunch of fucking morons. Oh, hey. We kind of know now, really, that you guys used us in the, Mandalor in the uh, Mandalorian Wars and the Crusades. But fuck it, we're still going to serve you anyways because Lord knows we just want to fight and kill people. Once again, why do they serve the Sith? Because they want to fight and kill indiscriminately for honor because God damn it, I mean, excuse my language, but it's like, you want to kill people. You frankly, they're, they're basically saying I want to kill as many people as possible to bring, give myself enough glory. And yeah, let's root for these people because God, their warrior culture is so awesome. They just want to go around killing people. That's great. That's really great. Fuck the Mandalorians. I'm sorry, but I, I don't appreciate them as much as other people do. And when I hear so many people talk about how great and wonderful they are, like Karen Travis, who wants to jerk them off, even in clone form, it's like, damn woman, calm down. People demonize the Jedi just to make the Mandalorians look good, like some sort of tragic people. They're not tragic. They have freaking murdered and mutilated and genocided people over thousands of years. They deserve every little fucking kick in the ass they get. <sighs> Boy, that was a rant. Again, if you like anything I don't like, that's fine. That's your opinion. This is my opinion. I'm just stating it. And, you know, maybe if you have something to say, say it. I, I would like to hear other people. I like to hear people's counter arguments for why they like things I don't like. Or I would like to hear people agree with me. People don't see, seem to want to leave any messages in my videos, which is fine. As long as you watch it. But, you know, if you don't like what I say, explain why you don't like what I say. And, ex and explain the counter argument. Because I'm always open to freaking open conversation with people. Especially in matters of Star Wars like this. So yes, Great Galactic War, not really that great. Um, fuck, what else is there to talk about? Oh boy. Uh, let's talk about a few of the characters that actually have names and purpose. <laughs> um, Darth Malgus. A lot of people really got hooked on Malgus there for a while. He's, he now has his own little fan base. Um, he was wasted. <laughs> He was built up as being this guy who could essentially, like, he had his own vision for the Empire. He essentially was a Sith who didn't agree with how the Emperor was very blasé, very uncaring, and uninvolved uh, in the Empire. And then what do you do? You build, you make a DLC for him, and you kill him off. R snap of the finger. Boom, he's dead. Well, wasn't he interesting? Wow, great, wonderful. I'm glad you built up a character that people liked, especially based on his books. And maybe was he in a comic book? I don't know. But just wasted. They didn't care. They saw people, again, like Revan, liked Malgus because he was a little bit of an interesting own character. And then they wasted him because, frankly, they didn't give a fuck. Excuse me. <sighs> Taking a drink there. Um, Darth Mar. He's kind of interesting. He's kind of bland, but he's kind of interesting. Um, 
there's not much to say about him other than he has a cool costume. He kind of wants to, he wants to remake the Empire where the Sith, um, can struggle against one another for power, but he believes that you, that Sith shouldn't go around constantly killing each other, that there needs to be some cohesion. Any Sith, honestly, who has the intelligence and will to take over the galaxy needs to be, start understanding that you need to build an order of Sith that doesn't go around just killing each other left and right, left and right, right and left, because there needs to be some fucking cohesion amongst these motherfuckers. Your code dictates struggle, okay? It doesn't dictate you have to go around constantly killing each other just for the fuck of it. Just because you use the dark side, and just because you adhere to being called a Sith does not automatically mean you have to go around pillaging and murdering and killing and genociding. It's just like, oh, I'm Sith now, therefore I have to do very cliched evil things in order to earn my paycheck. It's like, no you don't. You get, The Sith Code basically states you have to set your own rules, but you have to not be afraid to use your passion, your emotions, to be free of such restrictions as, you know, certain laws and codes like the Jedi. It doesn't say you have to go right out and start murdering people. But, I don't know, maybe other people take it other ways. But frankly, I'd like to see some Sith who take the code and are kind of like, you know, this is interesting, but it doesn't mean I have to go around just immediately killing and choking and stabbing and murdering people left and right. Reverend kind of did that, but not really, just in case anyone was going to ask. Uh, um, Darth Thanaton, fucking, I don't even know what the fuck his, he was doing there. He was kind of interesting at first, but then his whole weird kind of pr prim and proper kind of faux cockney accent kind of became a little annoying after a while, and how prim and proper and adherent to the old ways he was and at the end of the day he was utterly useless and a lot of times they just portrayed him as breaking his own rules for the fuck of it so again barris you know what darth barris is embarrassing as even being a character because he's just terrible Ugh, fuck, fuck me excuse my language i'm sorry i not use it curse as much i swear what was her name satil shan Ooh, descended from Bastel on Revan. She must be really powerful, right? Never really shown being. Was she in her books? Was she in the comics? I don't know. I don't give a fuck. Where the fuck does she go? Where does anyone in her family go? Where does the Revan bloodline go? Nowhere. Because we can't fit him in anywhere. Because you know what? Shit has already happened thousands of years after this where there's no mention of him. Where are we going to fit his character in? Nowhere. Where are we going to talk about him? Nowhere. Where are we going to place anything that has to do with Revan anywhere? Nowhere. And you know what? I have a very good conscience to believe that Disney does not give a fuck about Revan. Does not give a fuck about the old Sith Wars. Doesn't give a fuck about anything before the first movie, Phantom Menace. So, if for any of you fanboys out there who are all for this whole Disney scrapping of canon, I hope you do realize that they said things can be nitpicked, but at the end of the day, they're going to change shit for their own stories because this is, this is marketing, my friends. They're going to take names and ideas from old shit, and they're going to put it into new shit to draw you in, but you know what, the story's going to be completely fucking different, and they're going to have stories that are almost, maybe, point by point, already done in the old canon, but it's going to be in this new canon they have, with new characters and new situations, we've already seen it before, but because they say new characters, new situations, new worlds, we're supposed to give a fuck, but I'm starting to rant about Disney, I'm sorry, I'll talk about that another time. Um, Revan was utterly ruined. Revan was turned... I don't even like Revan again as much as some people do, because some people just think Revan is Star Wars Jesus. He's the freaking Star Wars Messiah. No, he's not. He's not, because frankly, he didn't choose to become a Sith Lord, so he's not even like Darth Vader, who redeemed himself, which is why that's such an important pivotal thing, was that he fell so far and redeemed himself. Revan didn't fall. He was corrupted by... And he's not corrupted in the same way as Anakin was. He was corrupted in the sense that he confronted the Sith Emperor, who didn't who didn't whisper in his ear. He basically just bent him to his will and said, now you're evil, you're my bitch, you're going to go out into the galaxy and do what the fuck I say. And eventually he got his mind wiped. And that's supposed to be him getting redeemed? That's not him being redeemed, that's him being redeemed on uh, accident. 
by the actions of others, he was redeemed, not by his own volition. Maybe after, later on, when he found out he was reverend, he's like, oh, fuck, I'm going to make up for all the shit I did. He didn't even remember how he got turned. So just because he touched both the light and the dark side, like many other people have, fucking have done, yeah, I'm supposed to believe this guy is the messiah of Star Wars, that he's touched both light and dark side. Oh, wow. Fucking wonderful. I'm your fucking... Achievements are great. Oh, so great, Darth Revan. Again, he's still a cool character, but good lord. If he wants to make him out to be some sort of savior and messiah of all things to be. But even I can understand that this game ruined who the fuck he was as a character. He gets released from that little fucking prison he was in. Goes to that foundry thing. You, the character, have to kill HK-47, a well-loved droid. Uh, crazy droid. That's Bioware saying, fuck you, kill him. Then you have to confront Revan, who's essentially gone evil again because he's lost his fucking mind and has decided once again to commit genocide using droids. It's like Clone Wars Light. He's going to use the droids just going around killing everything and everybody that's uh, related to the Sith in some way, genetically. And he's essentially gone evil. It, you can't say it's not evil. He wants to go around genociding whole people who we have seen in that game in other sources, not all of them are assholes who are evil. So he's going around killing innocent people just because it's to protect the gods. Oh, it's for the greater good. He's one of those fucks who people are supposed to like because he's one of those for the greater good types. He's dark and edgy. Fuck you. And at the end of the day, you kill him and he just <sighs> evaporates and you're not supposed to. It's kind of left open-ended. Did he teleport somewhere? Oh, sure, because forced teleportation is a real, like, really ground-based thing. There have been some instances of uh, forced teleportation, but I very much doubt that he just teleported. He died. Because what the fuck else are you going to do with Revan? He's not mentioned anywhere else. He's not going to be anywhere else. He's dead. They left it open-ended because they didn't want to piss the fans off by outright directly saying you killed Revan. What what did you do though? You killed him. He's dead. Your nameless, unimportant character killed Revan from Kotor. That is what BioWare gave you in this game. They gave you bland characters in bland situations that they try to make out to be some sort of large conflict. They're always talking about oh this super weapon that this invasion that this play outbreak that all caused by this guy or that guy or this guy. And it's supposed to be this really big, important thing. But like with all MMOs, when you kill the things that are supposedly bringing great damage and pain to your side of the conflict, in about five minutes, those things are going to get right back up and you can kill them and farm them for experience points again and again and again. And then you see yourself, or at least the person playing your character, walking around with the same fucking person at their side. And it's like, there's clones of me walking around everywhere. So at the end of the day, you're bland characters in bland situations that don't matter. Don't accomplish anything, doing shit any fucking uh, Harry, Dick, and John could have done. And you're supposed to be able to just go in and kill Revan, go in and kill the Sith Emperor, although he's not really dead. Go in and beat this guy and that guy and this guy and that guy because your character needs to do something. And nothing actually comes out of it later on because this, these situations are built around an MMO. You can kill that giant monster, but in about five minutes, it's going to get right back up. You can go into that uh, uh, council chamber and kill Barris or kill Phanaton, but they're going to be right back in there for the next guy to go into. Now, to you, that might not be a big deal, but you know, when you really think about it, you, your character, is going into that room again and again and again and again, killing this character again and again and again and again and again by other people, not you. It's not you going in there for a different outcome. It's other people going in there just for the fuck of it because they're following the same story path. And you see it happen. It's not like even with KOTOR where if you cleared out like the cave in Korriban in either game, you go back in there... There's nothing there. You killed everything. In this game, you kill everything in this one area, they're going to be back. They're going to come back again and again and again, even though the story tells you, you cleared the planet, you made it safe for the Republic once again. Why is there still an army of Sith troopers the fuck over there then? 
it's stuff like that. It's game mechanics like that that make this game unbearable to watch sometimes. Because you're like, oh, what have I really accomplished in game? Nothing. Wow, I really sound like a ranting asshole. <sighs> um. Uh, the characters and events in this game are really never referenced anywhere else because most of the stuff that came out at this point was already at a dead block, at a dead, uh, dead end of block. The legacy comics had come out a while ago and there was no, there was no real plans to continue on. Um, and they came out before the Old Republic, so there's no mention of them there. Clone Wars TV show was going on, there was no mention of it there. The only thing that really mentioned Vidiot um, and the uh, Great Galactic War in canon, in universe, after the events of the war and the conflict itself, is the Darth Plagueis book. And the guy who write that, who wrote that book, who wrote the Bane uh, books as well, is known for liking to include shit from in universe and in canon because he's a stickler for canon, which kind of pisses me off since he's going to be writing books, uh, new books for Disney in their new canon, so he can just write whatever the fuck he wants. Who knows? Maybe he'll try to fit shit in there that's already in canon, but it's not going to work because Disney will maybe even try to enforce him to come up with new ideas, new situations, new events based on shit that they're going to have in their new bastardized trilogy. But I'm not going to talk about why that pisses me off even more than this freaking game does. Not this time anyways, because I'll be here forever. Um... The romance system in that game is really fucking stupid, too. <laughs> this thing now in games, MMOs and RPGs. Uh, is it RPG? Yeah, RPGs where... Excuse me, getting another drink. Where um, romances have to be a thing. Um, uh, props, I guess. We're now including same-sex romances but okay whatever do we do your thing i'm not saying you can just saying that's i don't think a lot of people are honestly clamoring for it but you know whatever if people were that's fine i don't care my main problem is the romances themselves because <laughs> there's some of the most ri ridiculous things i've ever seen they're cornier or as corny as the romance in the prequels and anyone who says otherwise go fuck yourself and I'll make another video soon why the prequels don't piss me off as much as it does other people and why I even like them. If that's a deal breaker with you, then you better stop watching my videos now because, yeah, I like the prequels. Um, and I like the original. The originals. But I'm not going to watch Disney's version. Sue me. It's called Opinions. <laughs> um, like the Sith warrior romance with Vet, the Twi'lek. Oh, God. And then it's like all the really lame allusions to some sort of sexual activity happening. Hey, let's walk a little bit to the right. All right, let's walk back a little bit to the left after the black screen fades. You can tell the character model just kind of swerved in and out. He, they didn't really go anywhere or do anything. Oh, they got married. Woo! Your character got married in Star Wars. Woo! Star Wars! Ugh. Hey, you really want Star Wars? fucking porn guys just look it up online what are, what are you hoping for really what do you want i mean there's plenty of shit out there good lord there's shit out there shit i wish i could unsee because google's a fucking asshole when i try to look up something oh fuck it not literally though jesus christ I'm surprised there isn't anything for freaking Alima Keto, but, uh, you know, probably is. I just haven't found it, and I don't want to. <sighs> Boy. It, it, it didn't add anything to the Sith as a philosophy, as an order, other than that they survived and that they, they stayed the same radical dickheads that they, that they were portrayed as in, um, the Great Hyperspace War. I appreciated that they didn't blatantly say, oh, hey, a couple of Masasi survived, because the, the, the story of the Great Hyperspace War was that the Masasi uh, only served Nagasadao for some reason. They were blatantly loyal to him alone, and all, went, all of them went to Yavin 4 with him. So there's no Masasi. None. I did appreciate the... I did appreciate the Old Republic 
attempting to recognize that ca- that canon that came before, such as uh, Tales of the Jedi and KOTOR, of course. Uh, I did appreciate them bringing in a little more obscure alien races, um, like the Gree. The Gree, I thought the Gree models actually looked really nice because the Gree are a really mysterious uh, species in general. I thought that was nice. Um, I thought the space combat stuff was kind of cool, kind of interesting. Uh, the music is all right, but you know, I thought Kotor kind of had more interesting music. Kotor too even had more interesting music. This kind, of, this kind of music feels like Star Wars light. You listen to it, and you're like, yeah, this kind of sounds like Star Wars, but not really. And that's just my opinion. You know, you can like the music. I like the music. I use it in one of some of my videos. It's just. It doesn't strike me as much as the other ones did. The sacking of Coruscant was completely unnecessary. I mean, it, it, they wanted to, it to be kind of like a shock moment. Like, oh, the Sith, they, they sacked Coruscant. And guess what? They fucking destroyed the Jedi Temple. I'm clapping. Because, ooh, they destroyed the Jedi Temple. Did they actually wipe out the Jedi? Did they even come close to the amount of Jedi that were killed and the darkness that ensued the galaxy with the first great purge that happened under the Sith Triumphant, under three Sith Lords. Three Sith Lords wiped out the Jedi better than a whole empire full of them. Full of nobodies, full of no names, full of people who have no descriptions, no real character traits other than the tattoo on their face, the cybernetic eye, the weird armor they have, with has giant fucking horns, or if it's just a Revan esque type mask. And you know, this isn't going to be resolved because maybe the old Republic, maybe EA still has the, the EA and Bioware still have the ability from their contracts with LucasArts and with Disney to finish up this game and finish up its story by finally saying how the Emperor died, how the Empire fell apart, which will lead into the new Sith Wars. But again, it's all pointless now because Disney said, fuck you people and your canon. Everything in the movies and that Clone Wars TV show that isn't even as good as the old one is now canon. And everything else, fuck it. It, it It's a story that maybe happened but was taken out of proportion. Fuck you. Don't tell me what is and is not canon. Don't tell me what did and did not happen in this universe. I give George Lucas a lot of leeway. I'm an apologist for him because frankly I'm like, you know, the guy came up with this. He deserves to do with his universe what he wants. It's like if you wrote a, a book and someone told you, no, this should have happened in your book. This should have happened in your book. You're like, fuck you, I wrote this. So I felt that for Lucas. But now that Disney has it, and essentially they're the ones taking this idea and saying, now we're going to put whatever the fuck we want and say whatever the fuck we say is canon is canon. It feels like someone came in and bought, like, the rights to J.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth and said, guess what? Lord of the Rings, that happened. But everything that happened before that with like Morgoth and uh, the War of Wrath, that didn't happen. We're going to tell you the real story. Fuck you. Don't come in here and tell me then come in here and act like you know what happened. Just say, you know what guys? We're sorry, but this is its own separate universe, which it kind of now is, but they didn't put it that way. They just kind of, kind of came on and said, these are stories that might have happened, but not really because we're going to work around and do whatever the fuck we want. So again, I'm starting to rant about Disney. Fuck. I never really worked up. I apologize if I come off as being some ranting, raving moron. I'm really not usually this angry about Star Wars, but some of the shit that pisses me off in Star Wars really gets me pumped up because I'm a fan. I like this shit. What's the point of being a fan of something if you're not going to state why something you like, you like, and why something that pisses you off, pisses you off? And if you're not going to defend your position in a very uh, abrasive, you could say, manner, what's the point of defending that position? I could sit here and calmly tell you why I don't like something, calmly tell you why I hate something, but it's, you know, it's not going to have any real strength, real, uh, you know, to it. <laughs> real, that sounded terrible. But the real power behind it, why I didn't like something, and you're going to be like, well, that was a very mild-mannered, he's not passionate about it. I am passionate about it. 
This shit really pisses me off. Star Wars The Old Republic doesn't really piss me off as much as Disney does, which is kind of fascinating because I've been sitting here for almost an hour talking about how much this thing pisses me off. And I'm pretty sure somebody's going to watch this video and go, wow, dude, you need to calm the fuck down. And I'll calmly ask you to go please watch the 54-minute mark where I talk in detail about why I'm sorry. But yes. Um... I think I'm going to wrap it up, but yeah, Star Wars The Old Republic, it breaks a lot of things in canon, really. doesn't add anything really important to the overall scale of the universe, of the galaxy, of anything. It doesn't really just, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't add anything. It doesn't say anything profound. There's characters and events that happen, but they're never going to have any importance. You could argue the same thing for KOTOR, for KOTOR, but at least KOTOR was a really more fun game for me anyways. You could argue Tales of the Jedi has no bearing, but they did try to connect Tales of the Jedi later on um, after the movies because they were kind of being made closer around the same time. And Tales of the Jedi did set the set the games, did set Korriban, Zeos, what the Sith look like as a species, whatever. So Tales of the Jedi did technically have more importance to it. At the end of the day, can someone tell me, honestly, what Star Wars The Old Republic added to the universe that is so pivotal, so important, so profound, that it, it was a story that had to be told in the way that it was told, and that it couldn't have been modified to be another KOTOR-style RPG game with a lot more depth, a lot more detail, a lot more planets to visit, a lot more capabilities, really awesome storytelling type stuff with another character, and not this. Why Why an MMO? MMO it didn't, it didn't feel like Star Wars sometimes. I just look at him like, this feels like a cartoon baby version of Star Wars. And I'm sorry if that comes off as insulting, because I'm not trying to insult anyone who likes this. If you like it, that's totally fine, but... Have a discussion with me. Leave a comment why you find my arguments to be wrong, invalid, why you just disagree with my opinion, because this is, after all, just my opinion. People can have any opinion you want. It's a great thing about being a human being. You have your free will and free will to have your own opinion. That's a great thing. This is my opinion. I'm done ranting. Uh, I thank you if you watch the video all the way through. You know, it's probably just going to be a bunch of pictures. Listen to me rant and rave like a freaking moron. Um... Leave a comment discussing why you disagree. Leave any sort of comment because it'll make me happy at this point because it'll be my first freaking comment. That isn't just YouTube posting some random thing that apparently I did. I don't know what. And leave some likes for you know, me. Go check out some of the other videos. I don't know. Do things other YouTubers usually tell you to do at the end of their videos. Like, comment, subscribe, all that BS. I'm not going to ask you to do that, but if you want to, I wouldn't mind. So yeah. Um, until the next video, whenever that will be. Alright, see you guys.